The PlayStation 2 is one of the best consoles of all time, and it's my absolute favorite. Its game library is huge, and the console itself is still currently the best-selling console of all time. And I believe that PS2 emulation, specifically PCSX2, is the definitive way to play PS2 games. It takes an amazing console, and it just adds so much more to the experience. With the ability to run games at much higher resolutions with anti-aliasing and shaders, PS2 games can look and feel so much better on PCSX2 than they possibly could on original hardware. Seeing some of my favorite games running at 4K is a breathtaking experience. Some of these games scale really, really well with the extra features. I really love this emulator and all the features and plugins that it comes with. And today, the whole point of this video really is I just want to discuss a lot of the perks and the great features of this emulator, and I also want to show off a bunch of really nice looking PS2 games at stupid high resolutions, and I want to talk about why I think that PCSX2 is amazing, in my opinion, and why PS2 emulation overall is such a great thing. Now before we get into the specifics of the emulator and what makes that great, I know there's gonna be that one person in the comments who's gonna be like, oh well PS2 emulation is still rough and PCSX2 doesn't run as well as other emulators, or let's say it doesn't have as many features as other emulators, uh, they'll talk about how emulation isn't super accurate and this and that. But the thing is, you gotta realize that when it comes to PS2 emulation, PCSX2 is all we have. Even with that, all things considered, I think it's a great emulator. It has a lot of features and it's paved a great path of development. It's the most complete PS2 emulator on PC and definitely the one with the most support and compatibility. When you look up PS2 emulation, PCSX2 is the answer. There aren't very many other options out there. It's the only one with a big community and team around it. All the other emulators are in various stages of rough development or seemingly abandonment. Play, another PS2 emulator, seems to have some work being done to it on GitHub, but as far as their website goes, they haven't had a devlog update in over two years, and only 15% of games are fully playable. And that's the only other PlayStation 2 emulator for PC that there's actually a decent amount of info for. Other emulators like PS2 EMU and Neutrino SX2 don't even have their own websites, at least as far as I can find. PCSX2 is the only viable choice out there, especially if you want to play some of these more niche games. It's the only one that has a really big active community and a lot of people behind it. And the community and tools that come with it are very valuable. I'm glad that this emulator is available and that so many people use it and support it because it lets me play my favorite games in the best possible manner. Now it's time for me to get into the main reasons why PCSX2 is the best way to play PS2 classics. So first of all, a big part of what makes PCSX2 so great is that not only does it run most PS2 games very well, it often runs them at higher and more stable frame rates than the original console does. This is something that I think gets overlooked a lot when people talk about PCSX2 or really just console emulators in general, really. And what I'm talking about is the fact that some PS2 games ran kind of badly on the original hardware, like say Shadow of the Colossus. Shadow of the Colossus is an amazing looking game and they were obviously pushing the PS2 with that one, but wow, it, it has problems. It does. And yes, okay, most PS2 games ran pretty alright, but there are definitely a fair number of games on the PlayStation 2 that ran like garbage. There's a lot of games that run with dips to like sub 20 FPS, which is not good. Not good. It's actually kind of hard to watch sometimes. It almost gives me a headache. And now, yeah, not every game runs terribly. Most are decent, but the ones that do run poorly are super noticeable. This is probably, like I said before, with Shadow of the Colossus, it's a result of game devs pushing the original hardware 
to and sometimes past its limits and as a result you end up with these amazing games that shouldn't be possible on these consoles but they end up running badly but it's like i said it's hardly a problem unique to the ps2 many other consoles also have the problem of frame dropping and low frame rates in their demanding titles seriously i, I don't know how when i was actually playing these consoles as like a young teen or a kid I don't know how I never noticed this. How did I not notice the terrible stutters and frame rates? My god. I mean, maybe it's just because 20 FPS is all I knew. Maybe I wasn't aware that games weren't supposed to run like this. Maybe it's actually not that bad and I'm overreacting and I've just been spoiled by high frame rate PC games. I don't know. But I do know that it's hard for me to play some of these games now because of it. At least on the original hardware. Either way, it doesn't matter, because games on PCSX2 can run at more stable frame rates than the original console was capable of, which makes for a much smoother gaming experience. Something else that's interesting, real quick, this is kind of a technical thing, is that while most PS2 games ran at like 30 FPS, and so with PCSX2, they're also basically running at like 30 FPS. I mean, not every game, but a lot of them. The thing is, if you have like an FPS counter, it'll read PCSX2 at 60 frames per second. But the thing is, the game's animations all that are actually running at 30 FPS. It just shows 60. It's not really 60. But the thing is, it's actually possible to use codes to run some games at a true 60 FPS, which is awesome and way, way better than the original PS2. I mean, some of these codes can break games and cause other problems because, I mean, obviously these game engines weren't meant to run like this, but still, the, the fact that it's an option is great. Being able to play my favorite games at buttery smooth, constant frame rates is a godsend. I mean, seriously, a good frame rate is something that a lot of people take for granted. It's something that nobody thinks about. It's a luxury that you don't even notice until it's gone. This reason alone is already enough to sell me on emulation, honestly, and I haven't even talked about the graphics yet. Speaking of which, along with the smooth emulation, PCSX2 is able to take the PS2 experience to the next level with its many graphical enhancements available for use in games. This includes things like raising the internal resolution, adding anti-aliasing, shaders, and even things like scanline TV effects to give it a more vintage feel. Brightness, saturation, and contrast can also be manually adjusted, and you can make games feel more vibrant and alive, or moodier and darker. There's a lot that can be done with these games, and you can also use external shaders, and that alone also has a ton of settings. And the thing is, especially with things like these shaders and the color saturation adjustments, there is no quote-unquote correct setting. There is no maximum setting. It's up to the user to adjust things to the degree that they prefer, and it's going to be a bit different for everyone. Everyone's going to have a, just a slight different way they want it. This is so cool because it gives the end user full creative control of how they want their games to look and it gives you a lot of stuff to play around with and I don't know about you guys but I just I love details like that I love being able to mess around with little things like that. Raising the internal resolution of games is another great thing about this emulator and it makes for much sharper character models and objects throughout the game world. But I will say that these changes, these graphical modifications aren't some sort of magical cure-all. It's not the same as going from like 480p to like true 4k really, and I'll explain that. Increasing the internal resolution is going to do things like reduce jagged lines and get rid of blurriness and overall make games look a lot crisper and sharper, but it doesn't do things like raise the resolution of textures that are part of the game's files. It may expose more details that can be lost at lower resolutions, but the thing is, if a texture was made at like 480p resolution, it's not gonna look any better at 4K resolution. And what it's basically doing at a certain point when you're raising the internal resolution is acting as super sampling which is a form of anti-aliasing. Raising the internal resolution gives the game more pixels to draw the image with and then downscale that image to whatever your output resolution is. 
for the game. Either way, it makes images look way better, but it's not going to make everything look like it's high res. And some games can take advantage of this more than others. Some games just have a lot of low res textures and they're never going to look that great even with these things going on. And then there's some games for example, say like Silent Hill 3, a lot of these character models have a lot of detail that at low, like at PS2 stock res, a lot of these details get lost in the blurriness and then you crank the resolution and the game actually looks a lot better. And this is also true of some other games. Like I said, some games scale better than others. I just wanted to put this information out there in case anyone was curious as to what changing the internal resolution actually does to the game. And once again, either way, even for the games that it doesn't have a huge effect on, it's still amazing just to like see the games looking less blurry. It's like the difference between, say, like if you if you wear glasses regularly, it's like the difference between wearing your glasses and not wearing your glasses. Honestly, it's great. And another thing I wanted to talk about is performance with these modified graphics. What's great about PCSX2 is that even while setting games to high resolutions and messing around with shaders and whatnot, I can still usually run a lot of these games at full speeds with no slowdowns. Some titles are more demanding than others, and the thing is, on most games I can't fully max out the internal resolution and enable external shaders and record. At a certain point, it starts to chug a little bit, and the thing is, with a lot of these games, the actual speed of the game and its animations are tied to the frame rate. So if your frame rate drops, your game is not running at full speed, so it's practically unplayable. And at a certain point, when I tick all these boxes, I do start to slow down. But the thing is, my system has an Intel i5-7500 and a GTX 1060, so it's not a high-end system. It's, it's a few years old like mid-range-ish. And the point is that even on mid-range or even lower-end hardware, games can still be run at full speed with some of the enhancements cranked up and you don't have to worry about games slowing down, which is amazing. You don't need a beast PC to enjoy this emulator to its full potential. You really don't. Even with my fairly modest system, I can make most of these games look amazing. Now when I start recording, of course, I have to turn things down a little bit, but still, these games look great. Another thing I want to mention is the great flexibility and versatility of this emulator. Like most emulators, you can use any controller you want when playing PCSX2, which is great because while I love the PS2, the DualShock 2 controller is is really not my favorite. It's it's not very ergonomic. It's it's just not a very great controller. I mean, it works, but it's there there's better ones out there. And of course, being able to use whatever controller, th this feature isn't unique to PCSX2. Most emulators let you use whatever you want as a controller, but it's still a nice feature to have. It's still something that this emulator has. The other thing that's great about this emulator is all of the tools and hacks that are available to make these games less glitchy and more stable. Now the thing is, I know some people are gonna say, Oh, it's bad that games have so many glitches or poor performance or whatever and don't run well on PCSX2, and it's a pain to have to mess around with the renderer settings with every game just to make the game run accurately. And, and the thing is, that's true, it is kind of a, a pain to tweak around with all these settings, but you have to understand emulation especially emulation of consoles like the PlayStation 2. Emulation of these consoles is very difficult. If it weren't for the hacks and the plethora of options available to use, we'd be stuck with a bunch of glitched out games. PCSX2 solves the problems of the PlayStation 2 when it comes to emulation. It solves the problems of unstable, slow, and glitchy emulation by providing speed hacks and multiple solutions to play around with in order to make these games run well. Yeah, okay, it is a bit of a pain to have to fiddle around with every game and find optimal settings, but the thing is, that's just kind of part of emulation, alright? There are some consoles that are pretty much completely plug-and-play run perfectly, but you know what, the PlayStation 2 is not one of them, and PCSX2 provides the tools to make these games run better. And honestly, for PCSX2, most games don't take that long 
to figure out how to make them run well. It, it really doesn't take long, only a couple of minutes. And like I said, PCSX2 is providing the only solutions to the problems of PS2 emulation. If it weren't for the hacks, renderers, and recompiler options, how else are you going to make all these games run? The point is that PCSX2 gives the user the flexibility to make these games run as well as possible, and like I said, it really isn't that hard to do. It's not 100% plug and play, sure. I mean, it is for some games. A lot of games, it's pretty decently plug and play. Of course, there are still some where you have to do specific things to make it run well. But if you want a system that is completely plug and play, no thought required, maybe emulation isn't for you, okay? It isn't the most convenient, but it's the best option we have because PS2 emulation isn't flawless and that isn't the fault of PCSX2. Overall, PCSX2 is one of my favorite emulators because frankly, the PS2 is my favorite console. And while PCSX2 might not have as nice of a UI or be as intuitive as something like, say, Dolphin for the GameCube, it's the only PS2 emulator on PC that's fully working, and its features are still excellent overall. It has a lot of great graphical options for enhancing games and making these games look gorgeous, and PCSX2 provides the hacks and tools needed to get games working properly on the tricky platform that is the PS2. Not every game emulates perfectly, but once again this is more so a problem because the PS2 is complex, not because PCSX2 is badly coded or anything. A lot of PS2 games seem to be able to really take advantage of extra resolution or whatnot. A lot of these games scale really well upwards. They can look legitimately great with just a few graphical additions and updates to them. The PCSX2 dev team just recently released a new build with even more features, and this means that this emulator is still getting better all the time, and surely the future is going to hold more improvements for it. Once again, I just want to state that the PS2 was a really big part of my childhood, and the fact that this emulator lets me not only replay the glory of some of my old childhood favorites, but actually make them look gorgeous is just awesome. Because honestly, I think when a lot of us have memories of playing these old consoles, the, the graphics in our minds look a lot better than they actually look on TV. I think a lot of us kind of have almost like beer goggles to it, or like rose-tinted glasses in a way, where in our memory these games looked a lot better than they actually did. You didn't notice all the, all the jagged edges and all the the blurriness, and with PCSX2, you can make the games actually look like that, which is amazing. Anyone who has PS2 discs lying around who hasn't tried this should definitely look into using PCSX2 because it's just a great thing to have. I'm so glad that this emulator exists and that there's people that care about PS2 emulation because it makes some of my favorite games playable in ways they never were before. So that's all I've got today. I just really wanted to show off some of my favorite PS2 games in glorious detail. If you like this video, make sure you drop a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more classic game content coming out in the future.